this is the location of the former railway line passing through Helmno nad Nerem. Indeed, this here is the location of where the railway station was. There's now nothing which would identify this as being a former railway station. The railway itself was built around 1914 and it served until well after the Second World War. In the initial stages of the existence of the death camp at Helmand at Nerem, this railway station was not used. The reason for that was because victims were taken from places like the Wuj Ghetto by train to Kowo. At Kowo, they changed, they walked from one platform, side of the platform, to the other side of the platform, got on the narrow gauge railway, they were taken to Povieci, which is to the north of here. From there, they were marched to a mill at Zavadki. They spent the night there, then lorries collected them, brought them here to Helmand of Nerem, where they were murdered. The reason they couldn't actually get here was because of the bridge that was blown up. This was repaired in June of 1942 so then from then on people were brought here directly and the death camp itself is at the end of this road as you can see it's only a couple of hundred meters away from where the camp itself was on the left we can see the church where people were kept in 1944 before being taken away to be killed. Now the Schloss, the manor house, I think is the correct way of using it, often German word Schloss translated as palace, it wasn't a palace, it was more of a manor house, uh, was built in uh, around 1875, 1876, something like that, and uh, it had fallen into a bit of ruin by the time it was taken for these purposes. Having said that, as you can see, it's very close to the railway line, although they didn't think of repairing the bridge before putting it into use. Today, this looks very different from what you'd see in Cloud Landsman's film Shore, which was filmed around 1977, I think, or thereabouts. So 45 years later, it's in far better condition because the location here was, the, the manor house itself was blown up with people inside in 1943, but then it was put into use again, or the area here was put into use again for killing people. Uh, in 1944, but so a short period of 1944. Now today we have a car park which is to the right, which even in my videos, which I filmed here in 2007, you won't see. Uh, so that that is new, as is the approach and the museum itself is now much larger. It's that this church from 1876, if my memory serves me correct, is the landmark of the area. Now compared to all other death camps, this place really is very small. These buildings here, you'd see even in Landsman's films, uh, they, they are the same. And this is the location of the death camp itself. The, uh, the country house has now been excavated. You can see in some of my films the beginnings of excavations. Now it's much um, more advanced. We have the barn over there, which 
is now it's in my video. It's in, in, in what Landsman did in the 70s as well. But in the Landsman's, it's not in that such good condition. Uh, there were other buildings to the right which have now been demolished, but new ones have been built for the museum itself. So this is the place, the manor house down there where you can see the railings. So it's now been sort of protected uh, from the elements and the public. And the, the gas vans uh, stood between the manor house and the barn. And people were loaded from the manor house uh, into the vans. The van would seem either stood where it was or just drove uh, maybe 10 meters, 15 meters away, doors closed. Uh, it was connected, the hose was connected, and people were gassed there when the people were, uh, it was considered that the people would be dead. The hose was disconnected and the bodies were then driven down here this road to the forest where they were initially buried but then they were burnt and they were burnt here from April of 1942 much earlier than anywhere else so down is the left here and then to the forest Now, usually what would happen with um, gassing operations that people would be taken in the amounts that they could kill in one go. So I presume that people would be kept waiting on the train. For example, as we see Treblinka, which is very well documented, that people had to wait a long time before uh, there was their turn came in the gas chambers and they were kept on the sidings in the trains uh, in, uh, in the cattle trains and the trains here they were sort of the narrow gauge railway but it was more open it wasn't they weren't crammed in they would have been crammed in possibly in the uh, goods wagons that brought them to uh, Cold War, but it wasn't just goods wagons. There are photographs even of passenger wagons as well as being used. So it seems that they used both types of wagon. And this is the road where people were driven down to the forest. And there are people, the, the bodies of the people were driven down here to the forest and there uh, they were burned. As you can see here, some of these houses, despite having things like the solar panel things and new roofs, but a lot of these houses, I think you'd see even uh, in Landsman's film, for example. So there is uh, a quick explanation of how people were killed here. I've got lots of material relating to the death camp at Helmut and Adnerem, so if you'd like to see that then please subscribe to my channel.